Hi everyone, I'm Amy with Eating Healthy Spending Less and today I'm going to be meal prepping some really easy back to school recipes. Let's get started. So last week I shared my sourdough cinnamon swirl raisin bread recipe. If you take the dough and not add any raisins, you just make that dough. It is the easiest sourdough bread recipe I've ever made. So we are going to be making one loaf of that for sandwiches this week. And then I'm also taking the other half of that dough and making my kids a cheddar, spinach, and olive pinwheel that I'll be sharing with you. Uh, we're also going to be making some really simple jello that my kids love taking jello with them uh, in their school lunches, which I'm very thankful for because it's so easy to make. Uh, we're also going to be making carrot cake cookies. This is an amazing nut-free recipe, dairy-free, it's they're vegan, that you can make uh, for a snack. My kids love taking these for their morning snack. And then also we're going to be making simple boiled apples. So my oldest daughter used to have a lot of digestive issues and her doctor said that I needed to cook her fruits that she was going to eat. And so I came up with this really simple recipe. It's not an apple sauce, but it's still a cooked apple and she absolutely loves them. And we still make them today, though she doesn't have those issues anymore. So I'm going to show you how easy that is. Okay, so this is my sourdough dough and it's really easy to make. All you're going to do is add 300 grams of starter to a bowl, along with 600 grams of lukewarm water, 1,000 grams of flour, two teaspoons of salt, and 80 grams of honey. You're going to mix those ingredients together in your bowl. Then you're going to dump it out onto a clean work surface and start kneading it. You will need more flour in order to incorporate the dough so it's not so sticky, and you keep kneading it for three to five minutes until you get a really nice ball of dough. You're going to place that dough back into your bowl and then let it sit overnight covered. I like to use saran wrap, and then the next morning you're ready to go. You want to flour your work surface because the dough is going to be sticky. I always like to flour the top of it. Most of the time your dough is going to be sticky because your house is a little maybe on the warmer side, especially in the summer months. Okay, so you're just going to Cut the dough in half. And I always like to measure it on my scale just to make sure that I have equal parts of dough so that uh, the recipe cooks evenly in the oven, what, whatever I'm making. I forgot to put on my apron and flour on black pants is not a good thing. <laughs> so I have equal parts dough. I used my food scale in uh, weighed them to make sure I got the proper amounts. You will need a bench scraper. It just makes life so easy. They're only like $3 on Amazon. So for the first loaf, that's just going to go into a silicone bread pan. You just wanna tuck opposite ends together, like so. Actually, you do this for both of them. This is going to rest for 20 minutes before we form it. I like to flour the top just a little bit so it's not sticky. Okay, so we'll come back in 20 minutes and then we can make our, our bread. <laughs> okay, so it's been 20 minutes and you can tell that the dough is definitely bigger. We're going to take one of these loaves and prep it for our sandwich bread this week. Now I have four kids and this is not going to be enough for all week. So I will have to do this again in the middle of the week, but this will get us by for the first few days. So what we're going to do, it's kind of sticky. So I'm just going to put a little bit of flour over the top 
and the bottom. And then I'm just going to do what we would consider to be the final shaping of our sourdough bread. Uh, this is how I've always done my sourdough bread, whether it's this recipe or the traditional sourdough bread way. So you're just going to take the top, fold it over about a fourth of the way, and then you're going to start braiding your bread. So you kind of just overlap it together. Kind of looks like a fishtail braid. Then when you get to the very bottom, I highly suggest flouring your hands really good because it's going to get a little sticky. Normally I don't have my jewelry on. <laughs> okay, and so then we're just going to take it by the end and start rolling it up. And if it gets too sticky, like mine is, I'm just going to flour it again. And that's it. That's how we prep this bread. I'm just going to put it, it's a little sticky on the bottom. I'm just going to put it in my silicone loaf pan like so, cover it and then let it uh, rest for one hour before we bake it. Okay, so for my, we call it a pizza loaf. It's not going to be a pizza loaf today because we're making it with just sliced American style cheese. Uh, but we made this last week with pizza sauce and all the pizza toppings and rolled it up so that it's a very versatile dough. You could make it like an Alfredo. Uh, there's just all sorts of topping variations. So you wanna make sure you have it well floured so it doesn't stick to the surface. As I'm rolling it out, I'm flipping it because I'm constantly making sure that nothing is sticking. It's the same technique as the sourdough cinnamon swirl bread. We're just doing it in a savory way. And if you find that little parts of your dough uh, have holes, just pinch it back together and it'll be fine. Okay, we're just going to roll this out a little bit more. So we're just using this Good Planet Foods plant-based cheese. I have a couple uh, variations in here. I have the American style and then the cheddar style. So we're just going to lay these out. And then as a backup, I had this Nourish. So I, we typically buy our plant-based cheeses at Grocery Outlet because they're just so much cheaper. At Sprouts, these are like $6, but at Grocery Outlet, they're only $1.99. You can use uh, regular cheese, but for us, this is what we choose to use. Sprinkle on some spinach. This is just spinach that I chopped up. That way it doesn't get stringy. And then lastly, we're going to add some black olives. I just sliced these olives so that they don't roll around as much. This is something I made with the pizza version last week and my kids one of my kids said, Mommy, this is the best thing you've ever made. <laughs> so I hit the spot with her. Okay, so now we're going to roll this up. Instead of rolling it up in this direction, we're going to roll it up in this direction like a cinnamon roll, where we would normally slice it, but we're actually going to bake it whole. So we're just going to carefully start rolling. And now we're going to transfer this to a um, parchment lined cookie sheet. Okay, transfer over. I'm actually going to do this on a diagonal. 
This one's pretty long today. We're going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees. We're going to bake it for 10 minutes. Then we will lower the temperature to 375 and bake for an additional 30 minutes. Check it though, um, because some ovens vary. Yours might cook faster or slower. Uh, you just want it to be a nice little golden brown color on top. And then I don't do any sort of egg wash or any sort of wash over it. Uh, last week, I just took some marinara sauce and rubbed it over the top and added some of our vegan parm. That's probably what we'll do today. And it just turns out so good. The kids love it. I highly suggest making this. It's so easy and it's really cheap to make. While the oven is heating up, I just fill a metal nine by 13 baking dish with water, three fourths of the way full. Put it on the bottom rack of your oven and then that way you have a steaming oven, perfect for baking sourdough bread. So for the carrot cake cookies, I have a helper with me today. Hi. Her name's Callie. She's my oldest. And she loves these carrot cake cookies, don't do. you? Yes. <laughs> so it's a very versatile recipe. If you don't want to use carrots, you could use pumpkin. And if you don't want to use raisins, you could use chocolate chips. So for this recipe, first we're going to make the carrot puree. It's really easy to make. You take one pound of carrots, which is about six carrots. You're going to chop those up, place them in two cups of water in a saucepan and boil those until soft. Puree them and you'll have the most beautiful carrot puree. Yeah. Look at that. Okay, so for the rest of our ingredients, we're going to grind together two and one fourth cup oats in a blender. Grind it until you get a flour consistency, like so. And now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. Okay, so we've already got our oats, and now we're going to add one and a half cups of regular oats. This is a great recipe for your kids to make. This recipe is on my website. I'll put a link in the description box. It's a great one for them to make independently if they're old enough to. Now we're going to add two teaspoons of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of salt, and our flaxseed meal. And then we're going to add three-fourths cup of honey. Now we're going to add our one cup of carrot puree. Now, let's say you don't have time to boil the carrots. You're just in a really big hurry, but you want to make nourishing carrots. Go ahead. Nourishing cookies for your kiddos. You can actually just buy a can of carrots and puree that. So I wanted to give that as an option as well. <laughs> this is why we wear <laughs> Because mom... <laughs> wasn't being careful. <laughs> okay, the last two things we're going to add is? Uh, we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and three-fourths cup of raisins. Okay, go ahead and add the raisins. Mix it all together and we're ready to form this into cookies. While Callie works on scooping out the cookies, I am going to show you how easy it is to make boiled apples. Start out with about 10 apples. You want to chop them up, removing the core into about one inch pieces. Add them to a pot with about two to three cups of water and boil the apples for about 10 minutes until soft. After you've drained the apples, you're going to add about two to three tablespoons of honey and some cinnamon. It just makes it taste like apple pie. Now I'm just going to let this come down to room temperature and then I will refrigerate it and each morning I can scoop out a little bit for the kids for lunch. The cookies came out of the oven and now I'm going to saran wrap them for an easy snack. Lastly, we're going to be making this Simply Delish Jello. 
This is a vegan Jello. Now, of course, you can use whatever Jello you want, but this is the brand that I really like. You can purchase them on their website. Uh, they're about $3 a box. I highly recommend you just simply follow the directions on the back. It's just cold water, then boiling water, and that's it. You won't believe how fast it sets up. The flavor is amazing. I will leave a link in the description box below if you'd like to check these out. I just store the Jello in these four ounce little containers. I purchased them at Target and they're just really easy for the kids. They bring them home, I wash them and refill them with more Jello. What you're going to do is dissolve one packet in one third cup of cold water. Then you're going to stir that together and add one and one third cup of boiling water. Whisk until the powder has totally dissolved and then pour into your desired cups. I like to also add either canned fruit or some sort of fresh fruit to the jello. So I'm going to be using this pineapple that I purchased. I'm just going to put some pineapple pieces in the bottom of each cup and then pour the jello over the top. Okay, well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. That really helps me out. It helps me to know that you enjoy content like this. Also, if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make one video every week on handcrafted recipes using fresh ingredients and everyday living. Don't forget, this girl, I am on a budget. I'll see you in the next video, friends. Bye-bye.